In this video clip, I am going to show you the use of a, a collection of component in the PCPAGH toolbar to run a solar exposure analysis on subject in Rhino. And first things first, we need to set up the location of the model so that the sun settings is correct. I'm choosing Toronto because it's a high latitude location. We get a nice range of uh, different sun vectors throughout the year. And for demonstration's sake, I am going to make a series of generic objects. Uh, this one that has the funky shape will be our subject. And then more generic boxes as the uh, obstacles that will block the sun vectors. And of course, within Grasshopper, we need to drop these BREP component that can hold these geometries, or rather uh, making the reference to the Rhino geometry. renaming them just so I remember what they are and in Rhino I can just hide those objects uh, for better visibility so now go to uh, the reach tab we can grab the sun vector component and the uh, exposure hours you can see the V goes into that V it's pretty intuitive uh, V stands for vectors and of course the polysurface sampling component that we've created what it does is is subdivide a polysurface into smaller patches the B stands for B rep we can go to the we can take the subject push that into the B input and manually input a size uh, for our sampling and that depends on the the size of your objects obviously if you have a huge object in the small sampling size you will get way too many patches and it will slow down the computation and for those who have used a ladybug, you know that we need to offset these sampling patches off from the parent object just so the vector occlusion test can pass without running into the tolerance issues. I'm using a 0.4, which is small enough for our case. And then after the offset, I'm pushing the sampling patches into the S input of exposure hours. And for the O input, which stands for obstacles, I'm going to put in the context as well as our subject because you don't want the sun to reach the back faces of our objects. Our object is not transparent. So for the sun vector to set it up, first you need to push in the month um, range and an hour range. I'm only looking at October, so 10 to 10 is fine. 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then the day by default is 21. The minute interval is 30. That's all good. I'm gonna for visualization of the vectors. Just uh, let's use the volume to get the center of our subject. Use that as an anchor and visualize the sun vectors generated from those time ranges. Of course, I'm putting an expression to make the vector longer and easier to see. So now you can see the exposure hours already computed. Uh, the output is the corresponding list of percentage of blockage. So let's visualize or let's map those uh, with colors. I use a gradient graph and then let's sort that result from small to large. And then use the list item component to grab the first one as well as the last one. Use those as the upper and lower uh, limit for the gradient. And then simply push the uh, exposure hour percentage into the parameter input T on the color gradient. Like such. This way, each value has a color assigned to it. And all we have to do is, because the list is in order with the original um, surface, all we need to do is use the surface as a geometry and the color as the material to preview it. As you can see, I'm in wireframe. Let's change it to a uh, render view and make sure it shows. And here it is. Uh, you can see the color gradient, red meaning 
the least amount of blockage, and then the blue is the most amount, which is perfect. So red kind of like red hot. It has a lot of is a it has a longer solar exposure hours, and the blue has shorter ones. Here I am reversing the vector just so we can see a little bit better. Uh, let's turn on the preview and uh, move it around and see how it changes. So now I do have a working model. Um, I can play around with the sampling size, a finer grain sampling, give you uh, in a way more accurate result. Of course we can reduce the offset because our um, surfaces are mostly flat. So we can make it really close to the original geometry. If we have a double curved surface, uh, that offset distance might need to be rather big so that we don't run into the tolerance issues. And for now, we can see it's a working graph, it's a working script, but uh, let's put in some legend so people can read better. Uh, just so make sure it's working correctly, let's change it to July. Okay, good. The sun is a lot higher, which is right. And I move the obstacle closer. Yes, it's blocking part of the sun rays. I'm going to draw a rectangle to use later. Uh, you can put a legend in the view of the Rhino model. And to do that, let's go to the, uh, I think this is called a legend. It's just called a legend in Grasshopper. And let's duplicate that color gradient uh, instead of using the um, percentage exposure as the key. Let's use uh, 0 to 1. So I need to divide that number by 10. So that is actually 0 to 1 on the series component. And we need 11 of them. So it makes sure um, to make sure that it goes to 1. Now if we just simply put that color into the legend, you can see it's a nicely dividing the spectrum into these discrete colors and it's still uh, the same sort of gradient and now we need to I think we need to map the numbers in our case uh, the, those numbers are the percentage of exposure so if we multiply that by the total hours the total hour range, which is five hours from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., we get, uh, so for that each patch, we get how many hours it is exposed. Um, so we need to put that range, 0 to 5, onto the legend rather than 0 to 1. What I can use is, is a remap, um, put in a little expression so that uh, it's five hours times the percentage that gives you the number of hours. And then we need to use a source uh, range and a target range. Remap 0 to 5 to 0 to 1. Well, mm, actually, we need to, it's the others. It, it's the other way around. We're mapping 0 to 1 to uh, 0 to 5, actually. Um, and we need to get rid of the expression on that. Instead of using the percentage as input, uh, we use 0 to 1 as input. There. That maps it to 0 to 5. So now it's correct. So red means, uh, let's reverse this list. Um, so yeah, red means full 5 hours exposed. And then 0 means, or uh, blue, deep blue means 0 hours of exposure. That makes sense. So now what we need to do is to visualize that in the viewport. Uh, I think it's the R input and set one rectangle. Uh, the one that I drew earlier, uh, you can see now it's in the viewport. However, we need to change the view settings uh, correctly. Now you can see we have the legend and the correct color. So this is a, a quick way to really show uh, what part of the building has the most or the longest hour of exposure. And it can be a really handy tool.